Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A nuclear powered, unmanned, supersonic strategic jet bomber. Sounds like pure science fiction, but not for the Soviets. This was an insane seaplane idea conceived and explored way back in the 1950s as part of the Communist Manifesto for World Domination. All the best engineers of the Soviet Union joined together at the peak of aircraft development to create a dream of the atom-powered future to crush the hopes of the US military superiority. Hold on to your chair as today we split the atom to explore the pinnacle of Soviet nuclear aviation. Oh, and don't forget that we have an online merch store every week new items found in explain.shop. By bombarding the atom of uranium with a neutron, the atom splits and send additional neutrons around, which in turn hit more atoms, splitting them up too, creating a chain reaction and releasing kinetic energy in the form of heat in the process. This is a simplified explanation of nuclear fission, a discovery that would change mankind forever. Control the nuclear fission and you get a perfect source of energy, and if you don't control it, you get, well, the big mushroom. Now imagine having an almost infinite source of energy on a bomber. This aircraft design was so cutting edge that the Americans would have been scrambling to keep up with it had it torn into the sky. Like you could be with your own life with a Squarespace website. Just like those Soviet masterminds, Squarespace has something new called the Fluid Engine. Start with the best-in-class website template and customize every detail with reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop or mobile, so you don't have to build two sites. Stretch your imagination online with the Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go with any new Squarespace site. Plus, that's not all. Every Squarespace website can have a built-in shop to start selling right away, and you can use the campaign marketing tools to start driving business instantly. Seriously, Squarespace is the secret weapon that I even use for my online store found in explain.shop. Thanks, Squarespace. If you want to support the channel and see more videos just like this and get 10% off your first site and domain, go to squarespace.com found. I'm excited for your success and a special warm hug to all those who click the link helping make videos just like this. By the time the Soviets started working on nuclear-powered jet engines, the US was well ahead, having already developed actual test models of said technology. The power of the atom was so temptatious and promising that both governments decided to pour a lot of money and brains into exploring this new concept. The 50s also marked the beginning of the supersonic era, and both sides of the Iron Curtain were competing in building faster and sleeker bombers to carry deadly nuclear warheads to the other side. A game of cat and mouse of catastrophic proportions. So it was in 1955 that the Messerschiff Bureau got the order from the Soviet government to design a new prospective bomber capable of supersonic flight using nuclear jet engines. Something so fast that even the Americans would blink and miss it. The Saturn Bureau was tasked with developing the said engines and Tupolev had to test all the safety and weight requirements for flying a nuclear reactor aboard the aeroplane. The bar was set high and the game was on. Messerschiff based its first design something pretty much that looks like an F-104, however there was no cockpit and the pilots would be seated in a lead capsule in the nose section and fly the plane using periscopes and cameras. Not exactly ideal, but the only way to avoid the radiation. Another design used the M-50's airframe as its base, with the pilot being seated in the tail section and the main engine and reactor in the nose. Kind of an UNO reverse of a plane. However, not only was it that this was extremely hard to operate this aircraft from the closed capsule, but the capsule itself would weigh around 30% of the total weight. Add in a nuclear reactors with engines to that number and the actual load capacity goes down drastically. 
it essentially becomes a giant paperweight. Meanwhile at Tupolev, they modified a single 295 airframe, now called the 295 LAL, with the suffix standing for Flying Atomic Laboratory, which had that nuclear reactor but was not used to power the engines, just to test the shielding and stability in flight. With manned options being pretty much useless at this point, Messerschiff started thinking outside of the box and proposed something even crazier. One might ask how exactly a nuclear power jet engine would work. Well, if you're not familiar with jet engines themselves, let's explain the engineering behind it first. In very simple terms, air is sucked in front of the engine and then compressed, and as the air compresses, it also gains heat. Now this compressed air is mixed in with fuel and combusted. It's then pushed through the turbine which uses its energy to power the compressor and blast out the back of the engine. Simple. Now, what if we use something else to heat the compressed air before pushing it out, something like a nuclear reactor? The Soviets developed two variants of this engine. The first one would house the reactor separately from the turbine shaft, and the other one would have a shaft placed in the axes of the reactor. They quickly gave up on the first concept because it would take up so much more space than the second. And unlike the Americans who tried to develop a variant in which would not blast out the irradiated air behind the jet, the Soviets didn't really care much about the countryside. So don't tell Greta Thunberg about this one. Anyways, this was just the tip of the iceberg regarding the problems that needed to be solved. With manned options being pretty much useless at this point, Messerschiff started to think outside the box and propose something even crazier. The project, dubbed PAS, or Prospective Nuclear Powered Aircraft, was internally called Project 60 in the Bureau, and hence why the final design got the designation M60M. And boy, was this a nuts jet. First, the Soviets removed the pilots. The M60M would have been an unmanned aircraft, or a drone if you prefer. By dropping the pilots, you would also drop some 10 to 20 tons of lead shielding around the cockpit from the aircraft and make room for more ornaments. The aircraft would then be fitted with weapon bays carrying nuclear bombs or even missiles with nuclear warheads. The range was also increased from a planned 15,000 kilometers to 25,000 kilometers. The drag was reduced significantly with the new design and it was fitted with four engines giving it insane power and an easily achievable speed of over Mach 3. Then there was also another issue. Any airfields where these aircrafts were based were potentially Chernobyl's waiting to happen because if anything went wrong at any moment during takeoff or landing, then you have four nuclear reactors melting down in your yard. But that's exactly why the M60M would be a seaplane fitted with retractable skis for landing and reducing the risk of a complete land-based disaster. However, one event happened in 1957 that made this whole fever dream of a project simply obsolete. With the first successful flight of the R-7 rocket and further development of ICBMs, supersonic bombers, be it standard or nuclear powered, were simply not interesting. Why send a pilot on a risky mission in a multi-million dollar jet if you can just launch a ballistic missile instead? You don't even care if the delivery vehicle survives the trip. And don't get me started on all the ways something could go wrong with an unmanned flying nuclear bomber in the 1950s with Soviet tech. Not to be disheartened, Tupolev tried making his own proposal of a plane called the Tu-119, which was to be powered by four nuclear-powered turboprop engines. And even though the Tu-95LAL had over 30 successful flights, the 119 was never built. Antonov tried experimenting with anti-submarine aircraft, which would be nuclear-powered, and even made a flying laboratory based on the modified AN-22 airframe. However, by the late 1960s, all the projects were abandoned and the idea of a nuclear-powered aircraft was dead. The Americans tried with their Project Pluto, a nuclear ramjet engine for slam missiles, and there was even information about a nuclear-powered drone like the Global Hawk that could stay up in the air for months at a time, while Russia is said to be experimenting with similar concepts even today. Let me know if you'd like a video on Project Pluto or any other nuclear-powered project. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.